Hello everybody and welcome to another painting video with myself John. In this one we're going to be tackling Warlord Games' Africa Corps Infantry. And uh, this is great. I absolutely love these miniatures. The, the Africa Corps models are fantastic. And uh, it's an excuse to start building some infantry to go with my tank war army, which uh, I may or may not have beat Charlie with. I can't remember if that, I think we decided that was a draw, but with me in favour. Not sure. Charlie, if you're watching this, totally beat you. Rematch. I want a rematch at some point. So, yeah. Uh, I get to play with more uh, wash inks, which are definitely getting somewhere special in my heart. They are very, very good. And, uh, yeah, let's just get stuck in and let myself, my future, my past self, explain everything that we're about to do because I am the current self. That's really weird. Okay, let's get stuck in. So to start with our Africa Corps soldier, uh, there's a couple of things I want to talk about because a lot of people will have seen tutorials on different types of uh, Wehrmacht uniforms and SS uniforms and stuff like that. But very few that I've seen really look at the, the desert campaign and uh, to an extent the, the, the Italian campaign as well. And there is some differences to the uniform. So for a start, the uh, the base uniform, the, the the tunic and the trousers, are of a more what we would call a um, a denim style material. It's um, very similar to what the Americans used, which was called HBT herringbone twill. Uh, it's a it's a light material, perfect for hot conditions, obviously, because you're you're in friggin' Africa. Uh, it is kind of warm, so the uniform is made a little bit more specifically to be lighter and to be more breathable in hot environments. So the material is used as a lighter colour. It's more of a greeny colour as well. The other couple of differences would be on the webbing. So the likes of the um, the Y strap here, his belt, um, they aren't leather in Africa. They are a canvas material, very similar colour to his base uniform, but for the sake of making them stand out a bit more, We'll be painting them in a different colour, uh, slightly darker, just to make them stand out. And th that's the main differences that are on this miniature compared to other bolt action miniatures for the Germans, like the, the Grenadiers and stuff like that, who are basically wearing M42, M43 uh, style uh, tunic and trousers, which are the, the wool and would typically be in the field grey, uh, which is always a an interesting colour, hot for debate. All the time but we're going to be doing uh, our Africa Corps guy in the the most typical garb that I can find images of which is the the sort of the lighter denim style uniform and for that for their first color we're going to be base coating the whole uniform first we're going to be using Panzer Aces canvas this is one of the recommended colors uh, from Warlord and I think it's it's as good as a color match as you can get. Now, I've primed this miniature using a base coat of gray sear spray, and then I've dusted top down with Wraithbone. Not sure how much of a difference that's going to make, but I wanted to do something that wasn't just the, the typical airbrush um, prime black and white zenith, because I don't think going that stark was really going to add anything to the miniature. I want him to look like he's in a, a warm, hot, sunny environment, so trying to bring the colour palette up a little bit. So we'll get the canvas paint, and we'll just give the uniform a couple of coats of this, just to make it nice and tidy. Not needing to be neat right now. With the canvas paint dry, it's had two thin coats, so it looks pretty decent. The coverage is quite nice, as I would expect from uh, Vallejo paint. I could probably add a bit more, but it's not not really necessary. There's going to be some dry brushing and stuff uh, done later on, just to add a bit more. So I'm going to be moving on to the webbing. And for the, the canvas sort of webbing that we're going for, I'm going to be using Army Painter Venom Rim. Rim? Yeah. It's a little bit darker than the canvas, a little more of a, a vibrant -y sort of a green. And this is going to be perfect for adding in the canvas strapping on the Y straps and on his belt. So let's just see what that looks like. Definitely a bit more apparent over the shoulder, that's for sure. So I'm going to be giving all of his canvas equipment a couple of coats of this, just to make it good and 
make it stand out a little bit more. So that's going to include the Y strap, his bread bag, the belt that he's wearing around his waist. And I think he has some gaiters on as well down at the bottom of his boots, so we'll do those in as well. So we're going to continue on uh, with the webbing, with our uh, Venom rim, and then when we come back, we'll see what it looks like and get on with another colour. So at this point, we have the green down uh, for our equipment. We're going to continue uh, base coating in all our equipment. So the next thing I'm going to do is some Flames of War Green Grey and this is going to go over the felt part of the water canteen. So just a real quick one just to get that down. Like so. Next we're going to move on uh, to, let me see here, yeah, we're going to move on to some Corvus Black and we're going to use that to do in or paint in some of the uh, the other parts of his equipment which would still have retain, remained uh, the, the typical leather. Now they can be either brown or black but I'm going to make a bit of a decision and say well I'm going to use or make most of his equipment look like it still has black leather on it but I'm going to take his ammunition pouches and make it look like there's brown leather on it. So somewhat of a mixture of, of equipment this guy's carrying and I think that will make him look a lot more interesting. So we're just going to paint in the whole part of his entrenching tool. Like that. So we start to get a bit more of a varied uh, interesting look to the miniature. We're going to be doing that strap in Corvus Black as well. But um, a couple of the other colours I want to hit up now as well is for his helmet and for the gas mask canister. And I want to do that in Flames of War's Dak Sand. Because this is going to start to bring the model into what uh, coloration we really want it to be in. I haven't used this paint in a long time and if you're familiar with the Army Painter formula because Army Painter made these sets when the paint settles uh, basically all the clear medium in the paint uh, settles to the top, all the pigment settles to the bottom so you've got to be aware of that and make sure if you haven't used any of their formula paints in a while give it an incredibly good shake otherwise what you end up happening, what ends up happening is you have a lot of pigment with absolutely no medium in it so it's not acting like a paint it's just really thick and, and sort of chalky and it's not very good. So the Dax sand is going to go on to the uh, gas canister or gas mask canister. Probably needs to be a bit thicker than that to be honest as well that's not great. Again we'll give these parts uh, a couple of coats just to make sure we have them done properly. But we'll do all that off camera. I'm just going to try and show you where I'm blocking these colours out at. And then his helmet, which is going to need a couple of coats as well. It also has a leather strap sitting over the brim, which we'll also do in, um, I think we'll probably just do it in Corvus Black, make this look like it was a standard helmet. Uh, that's been repainted so we'll put, try and put a bit of um, paint chipping in there that chips back down to like the f a sort of a field grey sort of colour. Again trying to give the character a bit of uh, a bit of interest and a bit of narrative to it as well you know some of this equipment is just what he had before he was shipped out to Africa and you know equipment wasn't always available all the time. So those colours I'm going to tidy up I'm also going to paint the handle for the entrenching tool in Panzer Ace's new wood. I think it's going to be a nice vibrant colour. But we'll do all that off camera and I'll come back and we'll talk about that once we have them all down. So with most of his equipment base coated ready for washing, we're going to move on to do a few more. Uh, the first ones I want to do are his boots and leather. So we're going to be using um, chocolate brown. This is Vallejo bottle colour chocolate brown. And we're going to be doing boots, the ammunition pouches, the K90 ammunition pouches, which are on his belt, the and the sling for the rifle. 
So after that, we're then going to uh, base coat the rifle, and for that we're going to be using a Rhinox hide for the wood, and for the metal, we're going to be using scale color black metal. This is a great color, very nice, very deep. So that's where we're at now. We're going to just get the chocolate brown down and just base coat in basically everything else bar the skin at this rate. Um, there will be a few small things like a little bit of brass for the the rounds he's loading into the rifle. I decided to pick that that arm combination because I just like uh, a little bit of you know something going on rather than just standing and pointing the rifle makes him look a bit more interesting that he's actually doing something so well I have plenty you know there's there's brass for days on my um paint shelf so or on my paint rack so I'll just pick one of those and just go for it probably my um my mig uh brass the sort of brighter one that I use sometimes because then when we give everything a wash, it'll dull down and look a bit more interesting, a bit more realistic. So, as you can see, we've tidied them up a little bit. I've had to give the base uniform another layer of canvas because it was uh, getting a bit messy. My, my brushwork wasn't as tidy as it usually is, or as much as I want it to be. But everything else is now done, except for his skin. So, the skin... If you've watched a few of these already before, you'll know where I'm going with this. Uh, using Vallejo Extra Opaque Heavy Skin Tone. And we're not really going to highlight it too much because I feel like um, the skin should look a bit more red, a bit more... You know, he's in the desert. He's bound to have gotten some sun in his face or his skin at some point. So we're just going to paint in the skin here with a, a layer of the skin tone, the heavy skin tone. Well, that should do the trick. Now, the, um, the Africa Corps Infantry Kit comes with some transfers, which uh, I would like to prepare and put onto the model. So these are gonna be fun because we have the, um, the wrist piece, it says Africa Corps, we have rank markings and we have decals for this either side of the helmet. I'm not too sure what I'm going to do about the ranks. I'm not sure what I'm going to pick them as, well. probably something simple. And yeah, so we're going to put those down. Now the first thing we need to do is to prepare the surface, uh, the surfaces that we're going to put the transfers onto. And for this I'm going to be using uh, Green Stuff World's decal fixer. This stuff is essentially a gloss varnish. Um, if you don't have this then probably a gloss varnish will also do the same job. So what I'm planning to do is, I know the Africa Core band is on his right arm, right about here somewhere, so I'm going to give that a layer of the fixer. Take it a bit broader than it's needed just because it'll help just cover that area a bit more. And then we have a patch on either side of the helmet. Like so. And then I think, I'm not too sure, but I'm gonna do it precautionary anyway. I'm going to apply a bit to the to both upper arms because I think I cannot recall if uh, German rank insignia goes on both arms or if it goes on one arm. So what I'm going to do is let that dry, go and remind myself of the layout of the uh, the German rank insignia, and then we can come back. I'll have the the decals prepped. We'll dip them into some water, have them ready to slide on, and then um, we'll apply them. I went and had a look at. Um, what transfers or what markings uh, the typical soldier wore. So what I've figured is that the palm tree and swastika goes on this side of his helmet as well as his rank insignia which goes roughly just above the elbow. On the other side it's just the wristband and the national flag on this side of the helmet. So I don't believe 
they wore a rank insignia on both arms from from the images I've seen. I could be wrong. And if I'm wrong, fair enough. I, I totally understand. So right now I'm just hoping that my transfers are loosening on their paper because I have them uh, dipped in some water here. This is the rank insignia. And I'm just waiting for it to loosen up enough, which this one seems to have just done. So, <laughs> this is this is the fun part, uh, applying transfers to something so small. So, I could really have done with maybe a second uh, knife here at some point. So I'm going to try and apply this by using a brush, maybe. Yeah, that kind of works. No, that just fell. That's amazing. It's still on the paper though, so try and put it down. There, slide the paper away like that. Okay, so I'm going to dip my knife in some water and then try and position the transfer appropriately. And yeah, because of the, the, t the um, surface tension of the water it's going to move all over the place so I'm going to use this brush to remove some of the water and I'm um, going to try and just position this a bit better than what it's at I think that's probably as good as it's going to get so let's try the um, eagle motif for the side of the helmet so what I've had to do here is the film that holds these transfers together was joined. So I've ran the knife over the top because they were joined together. So just slide this one. Oh my goodness. Okay, well, it's off the paper at least, that's a start. Just dampen my knife blade again. And hopefully get the transfer the right way up. And get it into position like that. Now we're gonna have to do the same on the other side which means I'm going to have to pick up the paper again, which landed face down. Because of course it did. So, let's try and place this. Oh, well that was deceptively easy, that one. So I'm going to take my paintbrush and remove the majority of the water there, and then use the knife to just position it. I think that's about the same position that the other side's in. So let's have a look and see what we think. It's certainly close enough. It's maybe a bit further forward than the last one, so let's slide it back a bit. I think that's probably as good as I'm going to get. That looks even enough. Okay, I think that's still maybe a bit but that's it down anyway. So the last one then is the wrist, the, um, the wristband. So this is going to be the fun one too because it has to wrap in such a way that where the way it says Africa Corps is meant to be sitting towards his wrist so, or towards his hand. So I've slid it off the paper I'm trying to get it off my hand. Let's see if we can make this work. It needs to come up the arm a little bit more. But there ought to do it. And now we want to try and tuck the transfer down to make it neat. So, those transfers down. 
there's, it's now a matter of getting it to stay down. And what we're going to be using for that is some decal softener. This is very powerful stuff. It's one of the, the more quick acting uh, softeners I've seen. I've been a great fan of Microsol and Microset for a long time. And this stuff is comparatively is rocket fuel. So what I'm doing is just taking my small brush. I've got a bit of the softener on my small brush. And I'm just going to give it a little coat of that. Over each transfer, we have to be delicate that we're not moving any transfers around. So, and then the wrist one is going to be the interesting one. Just to give it a bit more to make sure it seeps in underneath the transfer and starts to soften that material down. And I wanted to do this because A, it's an extra detail, and B, I've never done it before. You know, I've never applied transfers like this to um, bolt action infantry before, so I wanted to see what we were going to get out of it, you know, were we going to get a result that was worth the time and effort to um, apply them. Okay, so at this point, what I'm going to have to do next is let those soften for a while. I'm going to let them sit for about half an hour or so. Once that's done, the uh, material should all be dry. I will then go back over them with the um, the fixer, which is our gloss varnish-esque uh, material. Give them all a coat of that. And then that'll be them sealed down and hopefully looking pretty decent. So we'll see what happens once they're sealed down. At this stage now, I've applied the last coat of uh, decal fixer uh, after leaving everything to settle uh, for about half an hour or so. And uh, it seems to have sat down rather well. I'm not overly impressed with the Africa Corps. Uh, what's it called? It's not a cuff title, is it? Yeah, it's a cuff title. Um, I think that the text is just a little bit too big. But um, again, that's just a limitation of the, the production of the transfers rather than anything else. The rank insignia looks great and so do the ones on the helmet. So I'm happy enough with that. Now we're going to move on to washing the entire model down. And for this, I'm going to going to go with um, a wash ink from Green Stuff World, which is Ancient Sepia. And hopefully, if I water it down just a little bit, it's going to give me a mild uh, sort of shading without making them look just downright messy and, and awful looking. So I'm hoping that this is going to add a nice little shade and uh, yeah, let's just, let's just get on with it, shall we? So. Well, the wash is now dry and it's looking pretty good. It's toned everything down a little bit. It's got into the recesses where we needed it and it's given that helmet a nice little bit of shading. So what I'm going to be doing now is beginning our highlighting process. And for the highlighting process, we're going to be starting back where we began. We're going to be taking some canvas, our Panzer Aces canvas, and we're going to be giving the uh, uniform a bit of a dry brush of that. So. Let's take a bit of the canvas now and just tr kind of dry brush up the trousers and the shirt a little bit. And all this is doing is just brightening up the areas uh, that aren't recessed. So it's just getting a bit of color back into the likes of the tunic and the trousers and just giving them a bit more vibrancy. So that's helped a little bit. Now I'm gonna move on to another dry brush. And this one is Tyrant Skull. This is our, our good old Citadel ones. One of my favorite uh, Citadel dries. It's just such a handy little color to have. And it works perfectly in this scenario because it's nice and dusty. And this is going to be another dry brush that's going to encompass, again, the trousers, the boots, basically most of the model now, so let's just see how it, how it goes down. And 
And what we can use it for here on the helmet, which we're going to do now, is lighten that helmet up, but also help to fade our transfers in a bit. Makes them look a bit more realistic, like there's a lot of dust and the maybe the, the decal itself, because in reality it was a decal, it was just a, a water applied marking. Let's see if it'll fade those in a bit. So that's not too bad. Maybe a bit light, but you can let me know what you think in the comments. So let's move on to some skin then. Uh, if I can find my... Oh, where's my Cadian flesh tone at? Don't know what that is. Looks like Cadian flesh tone. Could be Cadian flesh tone. It probably is Cadian flesh tone. Right, I just don't have any label on this one. I believe it's Cadian though. It looks like it is. So let's get my small brush. And it's going to be a case of highlighting in just a few areas on the face. He is mostly in shadow though, the way that the helmet is, um, the way his head is orientated. His head is mostly, or his face is mostly in shadow, so we don't need to worry too much about it. But this will take away a little bit from that sickly look that the dry brush has given his skin. Now, with that done, we're going to take a little bit of uh, Vallejo chocolate brown. And we're going to highlight up the rifle a little bit, just the, the wood on the rifle, and then we'll do a little touch uh, more for the metal of the rifle too. I know that in reality these rifles weren't necessarily this dark, so I'm thinking is maybe just adding a bit more color to the mix. So let's have a look at maybe adding some Panzer Aces new wood into our chocolate brown mix. So we'll add a little touch of it just to um, lighten that up a, t a little spot. This will probably look a little bit better, I think. Bit of a richer color there, looking a bit nicer. So. What else do we want to do while we're staring at it? There's not a lot jumping out at me, apart from maybe just doing a bit of uh, paint chipping on the helmet and the gas mask case. So do I even have a field grey? So we're going to try a little bit of dark rubber just to add some uh, chipping. So what we'll try and do here Use the side of the brush here and just lightly touch the edges of the helmet. I'm sure Warren would have a suitably inappropriate joke for that. Okay, I don't think I want to do too much more than that, do I? What I will do though is I'll take a different dry brush, take my Citadel dry brush. And using it, we'll stipple a bit of chipping. Onto the gas mask canister. So it looks like the, the paint is starting to wear through or wear off. You know, this desert color is wearing off a little bit. We'll do the same on the top of the helmet too, actually. Quite like what that's doing, so. So yeah, that is looking pretty interesting now. Wash the brush off. 
And then we're going to take a bit of a metal. I think we're probably going to go with some natural steel if I still have it lying around handy. And what I'm going to do now is just give a bit of a metallic highlight first to the rifle. We'll then take another bit of it and we will try and endeavour to edge the helmet with it. And then just a little bit on the handle of the bayonet. There's really not much metallic work we can do there. So, with that all done, um, let's get a little bit of a black into the, um, the lenses of his goggles there. And I would like, in theory, I would like to have used a contrast paint. I can't see where I put it now. It's hiding. Of course it's hiding. I really need to think these things through. So we'll be going with a bit of Black Templar contrast just into the lenses of his goggles. Because they are going to be tinted goggles, they're not, um, they're, they're sun goggles or sun visors, they're not um, just clear glass. I think, I think if there's anything else I've missed real quick, you can tell me in the comments later on if you think I've missed something that would have been a good step to go with. But I think I'd be happy with that if that was down on the table. So what I'll do is, as usual, black the base and uh, give it a coat of matte varnish and then we'll come back and check out the model once all the colours have been brought down and settled. And here he is with his matte varnish down and dry and the base darkened a little bit just to you know separate him up a little we now have our Africa Corps soldier reloading his K98 I am pretty happy with this guy I think there's certainly a few things I could have done better but I like the the dirty dusty nature of him I'm not not a fan of these clean high contrast World War II miniatures because you know, at some point, guys are going to get dirty running through dust, mud, snow, whatever. And I always like to have that represented on the miniature. I'm not just all about making the, the colours exactly right and making everything nice and clean looking. You know, and this this guy's definitely a, a prime example of that. I love how the wash, the wash ink has worked on the helmet and the little bit of stippling and edging with different colours to make it look like it's worn in. I think that's great. I really enjoy doing that and seeing that. The rifle, yeah, the rifle looks a bit cleaner, but again, it's something that they have to clean an awful lot to make sure it works when they need it. And I like it without going into too much detail on it. I think it, it looks fine, nothing too bad. The uniform, yeah, dusty, messy. I probably could have um, been a bit more careful with it, maybe done some better highlighting, but you know, it's fine. My biggest triumph of the whole lot, I think, has been the transfers. I think the transfers have turned out great, except the collar, the, the collar title, or the cuff title. I dry brushed over that, it didn't look the best, so... <laughs> but the two on the helmet, I think this one in particular looks fantastic, the way it's faded in with the, the dry brush layer over it, and the, the rank insignia sat there looking quite good. So all in all, I'm happy with how this guy's turned out, and I think if you were to do this across a couple of squads and have your infantry all looking like this running alongside your tanks that are all dusty and messy. I think you'd have a very, very good looking army, guys. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've picked up a few things from this one uh, and I hope you've at least enjoyed the watch, even if you may, may be a better painter than this. <laughs> anyway, thanks very much. Take care, stay safe, and I will see you all again very soon. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.